this process just a little bit, and that's not an attack upon you. That's not a declaration of war against Councilman Neely and the emergency manager or the state of Michigan. I'm just saying, if you ask for my input, I will give you my input. And if you don't like the input that you get from me, I can't, I can't be responsible for that. But we're just saying, I'm not disagreeing that we need a plan. We do. I'm just saying I don't agree with all points of your plan, and I would like more time to discuss it with you. That's my point. And I'm ready to vote, Mr. President, if there's no more dialogue. Um, Mr. Okay. Freeman had something he had been trying to say. There's I noticed that. There's a motion on the floor to point postpone of the resolution. Point. Councilman Freeman, do you have anything? Okay, Mr. President, the motion that I made to postpone was for a meeting, the monthly meeting, or for a special meeting. I would also add an amendment of another option until after the public speak if Mr. Early want to sit here and listen to the public chime in on this important issue as well. So that will be a third option, Mr. But right, Neely. But right now, Mr. Mays, there's a motion on the And this floor amendment to is compatible to postponement. Right because now, rather than lose a motion to postpone, for, what are you hitting that for, man? Because you, you, I can amend my motion, man. You, you can't amend it until after we vote on it. No, you can amend it before no, the vote, No, someone else man. can amend it, not you. Man, someone look, you've been wronged on these robbers' rules. Now all of a sudden you want to be a parliamentarian? Roll, roll Madam Clerk. No. On the post Point of order. you out of order. Mr. Mr. Neely Mr. is calling the, for your attention. Roll, Madam Clerk. Man, why y'all let him do that, Mr. Neely? I'm not, don't, don't, don't drag me into it like well, that. Well, you in it. You're a member of the council. I know, I know, but, but I This ain't like no dictator, chair. I'm sorry? I would like to offer a substitute motion. You can offer a substitute motion. A substitute Mr. motion Mr. to postpone this agenda item until after the public has Support. Okay. It's been moved and supported. Mr. Mr. President, there's no need to do that because there's no need to do that because it's on the resolute, it's on the agenda after yes, public speakers. Right, you're right. Correct. So if it's voted down to postpone, then it'll just come along at the regular time. That is true, Mr. Freeman. You are correct. I withdraw my motion. Okay. So the motion is to postpone, okay? I didn't withdraw my support. I withdraw the support. You want to withdraw the motion? Do you want, did you want to withdraw the motion? I withdraw it, but Scott, Eric, before we go, you need to quit you doing you that. Know. If we knew, and if you the chair, quit doing that in the public. I'm not doing anything to the You're public. doing a lot. No, I'm not. Re I'm ready for a call for the question. You're doing a lot. The maker of the motion has withdrawn his motion, and we will continue with the council meeting. Minutes of the previous meeting are on file. What Mr. President, point of order, it was a motion on the floor to postpone. I thought he just I didn't motion. withdraw my, I withdrew the support for the substitute motion. Is your motion to postpone, Mr. Mays? Yes. Roll, Madam Clerk, to postpone. Mr. Mays? Yes. Ms. Poplar? No. Mr. Nolden? No. Mr. Freeman? No. Mr. Davis? Yes. Ms. Galloway? Yes. Wait, you forgot Mr. Neely. I'm sorry, Mr. Neely? Yes. Ms. Galloway? Yes. Ms. Van Buren? No. Mr. Kincaid? No. The motion fails. It's, um, no. the vote no, we haven't is taken, just so my colleagues in the audience knows, we haven't taken any action on this resolution at this time. It'll appear back on the agenda later on after the public speakers this evening. Okay. okay. Minutes of the previous meeting are on file. What is your pleasure? Use your motion, Mr. President. Is there support? All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, they are so ordered. Are there any other petitions or unofficial communications, Madam Clerk? No, Mr. President. Are there any other communications from the mayor 
or other city officials, Madam Clerk? No, not at this time. Okay, there are no appointments on this evening. Uh, now's the time set aside for members of the audience to address the city council. Mr. President. Pursuant to public act or council rule. Oh, I'm sorry. I apologize. Uh, we, we have committee reports. It's not written on my agenda, but we do have committee reports. Our first committee report would be public safety. Councilperson Van Buren. I have no report at this time uh, other than we will be meeting in a couple of weeks in okay. April. Okay. Thank you. Our next committee report is the Finance Committee. Uh, nothing new to report. We do have an actionable item that's on the agenda tonight, which deals with our uh, mission slash vision statement and our priorities as we see them um, out of the committee for uh, the upcoming budget process. So we'll be acting on that tonight. Yeah. Thank you, but Council. nothing other than that. Thank you, Councilman Freeman. Legislative report, Councilman Neely. Yeah, there were no action items moved to the full body. Uh, we only had three discussion items. Uh, our business ordinance report, medical marijuana, and the vicious dog ordinance. Uh, all were postponed in order to gather more information to, so we can make a better and informed decision as we move forward. Point of information, Mr. President. Um, in a moment, I'm not recognizing you yet. We're going through committee reports. That was relevant to the committee I'm on. I thought we did have an actionable item that we voted on and moved to first reading. Yeah. No, not for tonight. But we did vote to move it to first reading. But not for tonight. Not for okay. Council Person Davis. Um, on oh, oh. report on planning and development? Yeah, um, no, everything, only thing that we spoke about was um, some that uh, one of the residents spoke about in, in, in trying to put, pay something in the budget for community um, and also um, demolition of commercial property and as far as that was about it. Okay. Thank you. In our land well, what I mean by community is about getting the grass cut, <clears throat> putting money into the budget so that we can get the grass cut, so that we don't suffer through the things that we suffered from last summer, uh, because unfortunately that was not placed in the budget. Also, uh, demolition for commercial was not placed in the budget either, so we discussed on uh, trying to find a way to get that placed into the budget. So, All right. All right. Thank you. In our last committee reports from Councilperson Poplar. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I represent Public Works Committee, and I do have a couple of things here. Um, we discussed uh, potholes and the status of additional state funding. Uh, the City of Flint received $530,000. Um, these are restricted funds that can only be applied to the winter maintenance activities prior to June the 30th per MDOT. And this money will allow us to address the potholes that are in our city and the craters. Um, the major streets will be done first. And they will divide the city into, um, it's like a three quadrant where they're going to work uh, from the majors and then they're going to attack the um, residential streets. Uh, the City of Flint will utilize this one-time payment uh, to fund all, to get all of the potholes repaired um, and, um, the act, and do the winter activities to uh, offset the maintenance expenses. And like I said, we will focus on the major streets first. Uh, we discussed, and that is the plan for the potholes. Uh, we discussed trees in the city of Flint, and there will be a group that will be taking inventory of the city trees and bring the findings to the administration um, to s determine what we will do in the community with the money that we have in our community. There will be a long-term and a short-term goal to address our tree problem, which we know is great here in the city. Uh, we also discussed the water rate uh, study presentation. 
and um, you may want to take note, it will be published. The water rate study presentation will be held on Thursday, April the 10th at 5 p.m. in the City Council Chambers, and it is for, for the uh, public. And after the presentations, um, I'm sure that we'll have a Q&A, a question and answer. So, Mr. President, thank you. That is my report as chairperson of the Public Works Committee. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. President. Appointments. Uh, we don't have any appointments. Mr. Mays? Yeah, Mr. President, before you go into the public speaking, if I may, on Mondays we have what's called the citywide choir rehearsal, and we wear black. Since I've won council, I haven't been able to go to choir rehearsal, and I see that the choir and my choir members have come in, led by Ms. Roberts, and I want to ask if the choir members of the Citywide Choir in Black could stand and be recognized and give them... Hey, and, and Ms. Poplar say maybe they'll sing a song for us. But, but the point is, I'm just kind of touched that I would see them. It seemed like a surprise that they are now paying attention to city council meeting. And if they want to say something, I would hope that, because I know they just got at a choir rehearsal and they didn't surprise me. Put a slip in and let's see if we can entertain your opportunity to speak. You're coming in at public speaking time. Thank you for allowing me to recognize you and y'all touched me. God bless. And thank you all for being here. Okay, we have no appointments this evening. This is a time set aside for members of the audience to address the city council. This is not the time for dialogue between council members. We'll not engage in a discussion with you during the meeting. Council members will not respond to your questions. Your concerns will be referred to the emergency manager, which is now our process. Staff will review the issues for city council and we will get you a response as appropriate. Council members may contact a member of the public after the meeting to address your concerns. So I would encourage you, if you want to talk with council members, that after you get done speaking, not to leave, but to stay until the end of the meeting. Thank Point you. of information, Thank Mr. You President. Much. What you just said, the emergency manager, order number eight, allows us five minutes at the end to address their concerns if they want to stay. And according to the order I read, if we wanted to use that measly five minutes, and I think it's wrong, but in order, in all due respect, we can address them according to emergency manager eight on the record while they're here in this meeting during council meeting. At the end. Yes. Well, I just want to clarify that. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, our first public speaker this evening, Madam Clerk. Our first speaker is Mr. R. L. Mitchell. Mr. Mitchell. <clears throat> hey, I'm Mr. R. L. Mitchell. Uh, Scotty, I wanted to address about this 436 karaoke long-term situation what Downey Early got planned in the in the city of Flint. Oh, I can't. I mean. Well, sir, address me. And Scott, address, address. about uh, before I address that, I want about that dictate you were supposed to be you and the mayor. I want to know, have, did you go to your education? You and the mayor with the, what he told you to get educated. You and the rest of the councils before that. I want could you address that? But you did you go get your education long term or short terms? <laughs> or you can't? Could you announce that? Okay, before I go into that, I want to address the fireman that come up, come up here. I want one of the firemen to respond to it, because I was uh, one of the first on the scene when this, them potholes and craters in the city, what Ms. Popular talking about, 20-foot potholes, nobody. I was on one of them scenes when I saw a truck flip over by on Dabberton Street, and I was the first one on the scene. And I, 
I was attempt to go and do the job. I took my coat off, but it was in front of the muffler place. The muffler man asked me what I was doing. I, I said, I'm going to cut the motor off because I heard somebody in there hollering. He said, I don't think that's a good idea, sir. But, uh, but while we were talking, I had to go stop on traffic on both sides. And then, and then meanwhile, I saw the bus coming. The bus actually stopped for me. I ran and got my coat. And they waited till me, and I got on the, on the bus and left the people there. I heard a baby holler. I, I want to know from one of the firemen what happened to, did they live or what? Because I heard a baby cry and there ain't no more sounds. And everybody over there talking about, stay in the car, leave it alone. I just want to see what, what kind of people we got in Flint while we long terming with this black stuff and war on with the mayor talking about and all that junk. And uh, I like to one of the fight, but when I was on the bus, I saw a fireman. One, a doc, doc, he drives the truck and responds to the car. I was glad to see that. I want him to respond. I want, I want him to see was the first one on the scene to get that up. Because I was tempted to turn the thing over and go in it. But anyway, I said that. But now I'm back to this karaoke for, 436 long term and like our neighbors in Frankenboost, they said that politics ain't no good. Just use straight when you hey, I better let somebody else from shallow finish talking to you, Scotty, because you look like you a dictate trying to dictate something. You and you kept Hey Man I'll what? address the council. Oh hey Scotty, man I, Hey man, what you Wait a minute. Through the Madam Clerk to City Attorney. Uh, Madam Clerk, I mean, the City Attorney is it right for Scotty to uh, to dictate me like this, talking about uh, I can't address him to answer why come he dictating. I mean, I keep coming back. Thank you, R.L. Our next speaker, Madam Clerk. Our next speaker is Mr. A.C. Dumas. Mr. Dumas. Good evening, A.C. Good evening. Uh, my name is A.C. Dumas, and I reside at 533 East Rankin Street. And I do uh, want to say a, a few things. First of all, uh, I heard uh, Councilman uh, Van Buren say it, uh, you would have to have a plan before you make the cake. And I do agree with that. However, if I'm having major surgery on Monday, I don't want them just to find out the doctor, the surgeon, what to do on Thursday evening. And I've got major surgery. So I think, uh, and I sent most of you all an email, a text message, that even in the Bible, Paul told them in the Bible, after he got finished preaching, to go and search and see if these things were true or not. I think you have an obligation to look what Mr. Early gave to you, digest it, and see if it's something that you can vote on. I also want to say this. I would suggest that you uh, postpone it till the next council meeting or till whenever you have an opportunity to digest those things. I do want to say that we're in this situation not necessarily because of what previous council did. And it seems though Mr. Early is alluding that council members don't know what they're doing or have to know what they're doing. But the fact is that Governor Rick Snyder, and I just read the study the other day, cut revenue sharing Amen. from schools, Amen. from cities, Amen. And the study said, had he not did that, we would have been solvent. I got a show that you shall make you free every Saturday at 9.30 on WFLT. Tune in. That's the truth. Amen. Also, you have to look when General Motors left. That also caused uh, some problems because of tax. But the study clearly that was released last week said it is because Governor Rick Snyder cut revenue sharing 
from urban cities, including the school district. Now that's the truth. And we talk about legacy. Listen, those cities gonna win their lawsuit. They gonna win. Listen, retirees. They gonna win. Yo, they gonna win it. They already won, and they know it. So I would just, you know, if I was voting, since Mr. Early has the power, I told y'all that about the water, didn't I? Let the emergency uh, uh, manager make the decision. But now it's coming back on you all about the water. Just like this. Let him make the decision. He's in charge. If you vote no, he still can make the decision. And that's what he was sent here. So, you know, when you vote, I told this gentleman right here, didn't I? Mr. Doe. Yes, sir. I, I, I told him what the vote was going to be. And it was just like I told him it was going to be. I've been coming down here 45 years more than anybody, including the president. And we as a people, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven minorities. What can I say? So remember, Governor Snyder took our money, our revenue share. We in here, and if I was making a lot of money, I probably would, if I didn't have any integrity, I'm going to sit to my seat. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bill. <laughs> Our next speaker, Madam Clerk. Mrs. Christina Robinson. Mrs. Robinson. <clears throat> thank you, Mr. President, for receiving me tonight. I want to thank Mr. Neely for being my councilman. I want to thank uh, Mr. Davis for trying to bring some decorum back into our city. I am brand new to Flint. In fact, I've, I haven't lived in Flint since I was a tiny little girl. Um, so last month I came to this meeting and I was appalled. The rest of the country and the rest of the state where I come from think that Flint and Detroit and Saginaw are the laughing stocks of the country. And now I live here. I also want to thank Mr. Mays for some things he said last month. He brought up that when he's talking, he's building a reputation. And I had never really thought of it that way. Whenever we speak and whatever we act, we are building a reputation. I just would counsel anyone in the sound of my voice to be careful to what we are building that counsel to, to whom we are building that reputation, and to what end we are building a reputation. The question I would like to address today has to do with property taxes. I walked into the city of Flint in May, all by myself, a suitcase in my hand, no job, no income. I don't even have a fixed income. I had no income. I was on my own two feet. I only had myself to rely on. The first thing that happened to me is I got a property tax bill in the mail, $700. So I took in a tenant in my spare bedroom. She gave me a $1,000 check. I put it in the bank. I wrote a $700, $725 check out to the city of Flint for my property taxes for the year of 2013. I didn't say, I can't do this. I need somebody else to pay my taxes. I didn't ask my mama. I didn't ask my government. I didn't ask my best friend. I didn't ask anyone. I did it myself. I want to know, then later I find out that about a gazillion people in this city do not bother to pay for their property taxes. I would be ashamed as a member of the United States and a member of the city of Flint to not pay my taxes. I want to know, Mr. Council, what the city is doing to improve this problem. What types of penalties are there for people that don't pay? What types of problems, uh, what types of, um, what, what is implemented to punish the people that don't pay? What types of things are going on to collect payment and revenue that this city so badly needs? 
That's where the money comes from, is our property taxes. And if, we're not ha if we have people that don't pay, our city cannot function. So until we solve some of these really simple problems of paying your taxes, I don't see any help in the city of Flint. And one thing I would like to say in conclusion, I buy and sell real estate, and today I sold and closed on a house on Chevrolet Street, and two people from the state of Florida moved to Flint. I'm almost ashamed when I drive down the streets and I see the devastation that I brought these people in, but I am doing my part to make Flint a better place. I'm involved in revitalization in my neighborhood, and I got voted in as a vice president of the Mott Park Neighborhood Association, and my job is to revitalize. I brought somebody in, but we need to make this better, and my question to you is, what are we doing about the property tax situation? Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Our next speaker, Madam Clerk. Our next speaker is Mr. Arthur Woodson. Mr. Woodson. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, my name is Arthur Woodson. Uh, I live on uh, 402 West Stewart. Uh, I've been coming down here, and uh, this is really ridiculous how things are happening here. Mr. Early, emergency manager, I don't even know if he lives in the city of Flint, but we have to give him city funds, and that's ridiculous. I spoke to uh, some of the beauty salons. I go around to the beauty salons sitting and talking to them. Why do they have to pay taxes on their property uh, equipment? Don't know why. If you want businesses in the city of Flint, why should they have to pay taxes? The water, Nestle Water, right, they get a $9.6 million tax break for taking water, putting it in a bottle, sending it over to China. And y'all charging us outrageous prices. My uncle's water bill was $189 for this month. And it doesn't make any sense. Mr. Kincaid, I, I, I don't understand how you and the mayor can sit up here and go behind closed doors with Mr. Freeman and do things like this, private meetings and all this other stuff. It doesn't make sense. I know there's a law when y'all make an agreement with a company coming into Flint that have to be 51% of the residents. How is it that, I don't know how many people for the city of Flint work on the water department, lives in Swartz Creek, Grand Blank, they taking all, out, all the city money over to the other cities. How is that? And y'all don't even pass any laws. The houses could have been straight right now if you would have passed a law when they started taking manhole covers to the savage yard. Up in Lansing, they got to put a fingerprint, they got to have an ID. If they come with aluminum sidings, they got to have business license in order to turn it in. Y'all could have passed the ordinance for the scrappers, for the uh, salvage yards, but y'all didn't. Y'all sat back and allowed this to happen. Allowed this to happen. How is it that the mayor, if you can ask him, I don't know for sure, but I just want you to, I just want to know for sure. Is he on the board of that pipeline? What's the name of that pipeline? Is he on the board? Is he the president of that? How, how is it that he can be on the board and be the mayor? Maybe he's the one that's hiking the prices so that we will have to get that pipeline. Or maybe it's because they're getting ready to start fracking in Genesee County and they need a lot of water and sand in order to get that done. Who's going to make the money? Let's follow the money and we'll understand why. It's, it's, it's really ridiculous, man, how things are going on here and you allowing this to happen. I can't believe the votes for this, for this thing that they just proposed just now. I can't understand it. Because of simple fact, all that is is just a little dry sketch. And then they're going to add the data in later. They're going to add, well, then uh, this data shows that we need to do this amount, this amount. That's what Mr. Mays was talking about. And they, they keep on bamboozling us. And, and let me ask you this. If, if, if a black governor would have sent a white emergency manager, I mean a black governor sent a black emergency manager into an all white city, do you think this would be going on right now? I don't even believe this would be happening. Matter of fact, I'm going to give you an example. In Connecticut, the governor passed a law to register all their guns. The people said, we're not doing it. They haven't done it. Why can't we stand up as one on city council? Stand up and say, you know what? 
I'm done with this. We don't need him. Saginaw just as worse as we are, and he was a city manager over there. So what, how can how can he help us? With